historisk tilbakeblikk, samtidig som landsmøtet retter blikket fremover. Det er en glede og ære at FNs tidligere generalsekretær er med oss som landsmøtets gjest. Dear Kofi, it means a great deal to me personally that we are able to share this podium today here in Norway. Everybody here, and I believe the people of Norway, are all proud to have you as our guest in this country also. It's not only the Labour Party. You know, you know, in a sense, we, we have been colleagues for decades, pursuing many of the same goals and objectives from various positions. But we were always, in a sense, connected. Your distinguished international career started, in fact, in the World Health Organization in Geneva back in 1962. And you have held a number of important positions in your own country, Ghana, and, of course, in the United Nations. In December 96, you were chosen by the international community to become Secretary General of the United Nations at a crucial time for the UN. Already, you had been in charge of some of the most difficult and challenging tasks of the, in the history of the United Nations. The crisis in Rwanda, and in the former Yugoslavia. Now, we met as colleagues in a new sense when I was elected Director General of the World Health Organization in 98. I believe it was only a couple of days after my election that we met in Switzerland, in Davos, to discuss how the UN and the World Health Organizations best could work together. And we identified the key, one key issue is to set common priority goals. And that enabled our organizations and the countries of the world to deal more effectively with some of the gravest challenges to health, which was taking such a devastating toll in human lives. HIV, AIDS, malaria, and a number of preventable diseases were ravaging part of the world. We face a resource problem, yes, but we also face a problem of lack of focus. In countries in crisis, people were suffering and are still suffering today, locked in a vicious cycle of poverty and insecurity. Rates of severe illness and death were high, are high even today. The crises are caused by violent conflict, often over decades, by natural disasters like drought, by economic collapse, or by poor governance. Often these different causes work together in a deadly combination. Now, nearly a third of the population of Sub-Saharan Africa lived in weak and failed states or in states ravaged by complex emergencies. A descent into poverty and lawlessness leads to rapid declines in health. People were not fully aware of how strong these links are between the different aspects of what is necessary to live a decent life. They lead to higher infant mortality and lower life expectancy. Now, these underlying causes lead to a downward spiral, which is making countries increasingly weak. Again, it illustrates it has a peace and security perspective. It is not something different and out of the question, and which is why you see the Security Council not only during Kofi Annan's time dealing with AIDS, for the first time, this time dealing with climate for the first time. They are all interlinked. Now, we were both looking for ways and means to strengthen the hand of health in international affairs. 
Our joint efforts led to the establishment of GAVI, the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, which everyone in this hall knows about. The Global Fund and the private sector became increasingly involved in our work. Now this is but uh, one aspect of your impressive work to revitalize the United Nations in the broadest sense. I'm using the example of health at the global level to illustrate your role to really reach out and to link together the peace, the development and the human rights and the environment agendas into one thinking around a better world. We, your colleagues in the United Nations family, always proudly saw you as the general, not the secretary. So, no one has done more than Kofi Annan to revitalize the UN. After taking office as the seventh secretary general in January of 97, you managed in a very short time to give the UN an external prestige and an internal morale, the likes of which the organization had hardly seen in its history. As secretary general, you have figured prominently in the efforts to resolve a whole series of international disputes, the repercussions of the Gulf War, the wars, well, even trying to prevent it, but that issue is a big and complicated one, as we all know. But the wars in the former Yugoslavia, and especially in Kosovo, the status of East Timor, the war in the Congo, and the implementation of the UN resolutions concerning the Middle East and land for peace. Now, time and again you have maintained that sovereignty is not a shield behind which member countries can hide their violations of human rights. You adopted an activist approach to the struggle against HIV AIDS and made it a personal priority. When the terrorists attacked New York and Washington in 2001, you urged that the UN must be giving, given a leading part to play in the fight against international terrorism. You paved the way even before that, for the UN's Millennium Declaration and the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. To put an end to poverty, to reduce child mortality by two-thirds, to improve maternal health, to provide better education for the world's billions of people, to reduce HIV AIDS, to protect the environment, and to prevent war and armed conflict. Now, this agenda is so well known to us and at the same time it focuses on what is important in every human being's life. We understand it immediately when we hear this list. It is linked to the future of humanity, to the future of children, mothers, to all of us. As you know, we in Norway make every effort to ensure that the international community delivers on these promises. We will do, and we the fortunate have a moral obligation to ensure that the poor and the powerless can be lifted out of the dark valley of poverty and squalor. So the torch is being passed on to new generations. We who are gathered today know we can seek your guidance and advice in our never-ending quest for human rights, more solidarity, more justice. Ten years at the helm of the United Nations. I am pleased and gratified that the, Nobel, the Norwegian Nobel Committee had the wisdom to bestow the prize upon you at the turn of the millennium six years ago. We were all proud and you were greeted as our big hero, which you are also today. So today it is our great privilege 
to express our respect and our gratitude for your invaluable services to humanity. Kofi, I'm happy to give you the floor at this important convention of the Norwegian Labour Party.